Welcome to the Loki podcast, the officially unofficial podcast for Loki on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I'm trying to do an intro for this thing. It's the, the podcast where everything's made up and the plots don't matter. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Hey, hey, Ron. How's it going? I, I'm being facetious uh, on that, by the way, because the plots do matter, but everything is made up. That's true. That's true. Uh, Loki, uh, a subsidiary of Bald Move Pulp. Yeah. What did you think of this episode, Jim? Uh, I thought it was pretty good. I realized somewhere along the way when they were talking about um, when Loki straight up asked the question that we had last episode of like, mm-hmm. hey, why don't we just go back to before the attack and prevent this whole thing from happening before the Nexus event happens? And they were like, uh, well, d- I don't know, destabilized timeline, weird shit uh blah 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 and i was like oh yeah i just need to turn off my my brain they're not going yeah. to logic a path through the the time travel stuff in this they're just going they're creating a uh their own mythology around timeline stuff right and that's fine i just need to get in that mindset uh and once i did yeah, that I mean, it was they, a little easier to kind of swallow the rest of what's going on this episode they, they essentially had in that moment, like Christopher Lloyd come on and be like, great Scott, Marty, if you touch your mom, it'll, the whole thing will fabric for time. And yeah. it's yeah, they're like intentionally telling you, forget, forget all the really advanced time travel shit. Don't worry about looper. Don't worry about primer. Don't worry about the endless. Like, you know, this, yeah. this, this is just going to be your own thing. This is like Terminator style paradox free kind of detached from causality don't think too hard about free will and determinism they, they they essentially told us all that stuff in this episode um yeah but i liked it i liked it that because like i still think owen wilson and uh, tom hilston are very entertaining in their chemistry uh i think that could go too much either way but i was also excited to see them kind of break that team up and have loki go a bit rogue at the end of the episode Mm-hmm. Uh, I, th- I figured that would happen, you know, the inevitable betrayal, but I didn't think it would happen like in episode two. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Or the way um, it happens. I mean, it was very different. He didn't intentionally like backstab anybody. Yeah. You know, there's a bit of the, of the good and the bad here and yeah, uh, it worked. It's plausible. Like, I honestly don't know. Like, I, I mean, I, I guess seeing this as a Marvel production that, like, I'm biased to thinking that Loki is going to eventually be some sort of some shade of true blue. Yeah. True aquamarine at at uh, at worst. Um, and he's going to come out of here still intact as like some kind of Marvel good guy, maybe antihero. But mm. I don't think he's going to be villainous. <laughs> but there's enough kind of like wiggle room. Like the one of the fun things about this episode is everyone talking about like, well, of course you're lying. Every time your lips move, you lie. And every time I turn your back or you turn, you see a back, you stab it. And Loki trying to like fight from that position that everyone suspects him of pulling shit all the time. Uh, and they're having a lot of fun with that. So I, I thought that that's all really interesting. There's a lot of like um, little Easter eggs and stuff that um, I, I researched a few that I had time for. Um, but uh, I think some people are really overthinking some things. Um, just based I on mean, my history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the TV show so far, it feels like people are really reaching for some of this stuff. But. Is the show encouraging that, though? I feel like it is. I, I feel like every time Loki opens his mouth and says something about like the good guys being the bad guys and vice versa, um, or it's just like oh the great thing about everyone knowing you're a liar is knowing that they know you're a liar and doing things mm-hmm. based like all of that stuff that he's saying is encouraging people to go real deep on the theories i think yeah it uh, that and uh, but the, the thing that i always push back is like you know i followed i've watched all these marvel shows um captain uh, the falcon winter soldier uh, WandaVision. I was pretty invested in them. I was following a lot of the fan theories a lot more heavily than than, than Jim anyway. And I felt pretty gratified that in our coverage and our discussions, we didn't get too far into those weeds because almost every single time the, the bush wasn't worth whacking, yeah. you know? Uh, and I think that that's probably going to be the case here because the other thing is like, what are the odds that Marvel's going to do some kind of like reveal that's like double triple secret comic book history lore like if they're going to pull something like that they have to bring the audience around with them Mm -hmm. so like you might be able to you know 
uh, be a few moves ahead of them from an obscure character they're going to deploy. But like, I don't think that like advanced comic lore will necessarily help you understand the series because if it's not comprehensible to the people who are not doing that and the vast majority of people aren't, then yeah. it's just not going to work. And Marvel knows that. So like, I would rather be a person who knows that knew nothing about guardians of the galaxy when I went in to see that theater than someone who was a huge guardian of the galaxy fan, because I think that former person or the latter person's a lot more likely to be disappointed mm-hmm. that it didn't go, Oh, this isn't a silver age. Yeah. Uh, Star Lord that I was hoping for. And his helmet doesn't look anything like it. And his jetpacks don't work that way. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. Uh, so that that's yeah. that's what I'm assuming is going to happen here. So, I, I mean, that, it gives me hope because it, it makes me feel like I'm not fighting with one hand tied behind my back during these podcasts uh, and while mm-hmm. trying to interpret the show. Because, yeah, if, if they're willing to deviate pretty far from the comics, uh, th- then it makes me feel like they're valuing me as a viewer a little bit more because I haven't read the comics. I'm not uh, even saying they'll deviate. I'm just saying that to the extent that they'll follow them, that has to be on the screen because what they it, won't yeah, yeah. do is just push you out of a lore airplane into the middle of a lore jungle and be like, here's your flashlight. Here's a reading list of uh, uh, 60s and 70s Marvel comic books. Good fucking luck. Yeah. You know, because that's a way for like 99% of the fan base to be like, ah, I don't understand what's going on and, and, and bail. So... Yeah, no, it's stuff we've talked about with like, uh, you know, video game TV show crossover type things where they want to mm-hmm. do both and they want you to consume both of those, but half the audience isn't going to. And so they yep. they need to make them independent, but the whole idea was to not make them independent. Yeah, it's it's a strange thing. Um, I, I will say that they're laying, certainly laying the tracks for bigger reveals right i mean there's a lot of stuff in here that makes me think that the tva is not exactly the good guys they claim to be um at least not 100 mm. percent good guys like loki says uh and we'll might get more into that what's that might even be a fraud a scam like a flim flam could be these these masters of the time universe has anyone seen them has anyone commune with them that's the like, thing the, the characters we're uh familiar with have not seen them or necessarily right. seen them or talked to them so right all, all good questions the, the the timekeepers could be the equivalent of of jet skis to mobius right he's heard of them <laughs> yeah he just can't go actually ride one and okay sure poor metaphor poor metaphor he doesn't want to ride the timekeepers but you know where I'm going with that, right? <laughs> you don't know. Maybe he would. Maybe they're sued. Those timekeepers are sexy as fuck. Um, Maybe. The question is whether they want to ride you. Yeah. I, I do. It, it, it does. Like, there seems like there's a big, big um, uh, uh, Wizard of Oz energy here. Like, pay no attention between to the timekeepers behind the, yeah. you know, vast mysteries of the epilogue of the future. Um. And I think that, yeah, that's that's there's there's a lot of ambiguity about and then there's man, that's also like every single time you find um, like some kind of good guy authoritarian figure in the Marvel Universe. It seems like they're secretly bad guys. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking like, you know, speaking of Star Wars, his dad, you know, seemed like a, a villain in the end. There's been a, a few a few times there where um, the, the good guys about the law and order think about how like shield got corrupted by Hydra. Um, a lot of people they are trying to enforce a way on like a broader th- reality tend to be high control. And those t- people tend to be, you know, uh, evil. So yeah. short sighted. Yeah. I think there's a certain inherent evil um, in what the TVA does, but we'll talk about that. And maybe we should get to the recap now. All right, we start off in Oshkosh, Wisconsin in 1985. The TVA has tracked Variant to a Renaissance festival, and the Variant mind control is one of the uh, TVA task force people, C20, and forces her to attack the others and then drags her through a time portal. Uh, yeah, uh, I really like the fake out Ren Fair fake out because they're playing, you know, green sleeves and it looks like at first glance that, oh, we're going to go back to the Middle Ages like we've done before. And But no, it's just right as the time counter is like spinning and yeah, eventually hits yeah. 1985. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I is like. It, uh, oh, go ahead. Is it just me or is the person there that's trying to talk at the task force here? Does she look a lot like Agatha? 
Am I crazy? Oh, no, nah, I didn't see that. I don't I think it's literally that. her, but I, I thought she looked a lot like her. Gotcha. I did like that. Some of us need this, you know. <laughs> Although yeah. I will say that, like, I've been to a lot of Ren Fest, never one in the 80s, but the earliest one I went to is probably the late 90s. It's not a, the people, like, yeah, you definitely see your medieval and your quasi medieval, but you also see a lot of dudes, like, dressed up like the fucking Matrix. Oh, and their yeah. black trench coats and their katanas. And like, I think that the, a squad cosplaying as some kind of time cop would be very fucking on brand for uh, a Midwestern Ren Fair. I, I really do. I, I don't think that they would have stuck, stuck out like sore thumbs. People would definitely be thinking, oh, they're doing something. They're, they're doing a bit. But yeah. Yeah. And then there's um, people like me who just go there in shorts and sneakers. Right. And a sure, shirt. I'm wearing sure. a shirt, too. It's not it's nothing weird. <laughs> Uh, but you know just regular uh, everyday clothes does that take you out of it yeah oh i mean that's a, the the vast majority of people at a rin fair are just like just just normal people you know like right. if you want to take the extra step i mean hell if you want to joust then uh join up with the traveling rin fest juggling troop or whatever <laughs> band of winches like yeah sure whatever get your get your leather uh, corset and hike up them tits. Be, do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. I, I, I'll be the yeah. I'll be the guy in the the twenty first century attire. Yeah. Maybe I'll have a horn. I do have a little horn, a meat mm -hmm. horn that that I carry with me. So I, I get into a spirit a little bit. Yeah. Uh, here's uh, what did you, right off the bat. We you start think? with something like uh, something related to this idea that the bad guys are never just bad and the good guys are never just good. It, and it's this song, I Need a mm -hmm. Hero. When this song is playing, th the way that I Need a Hero is used is always when someone is becoming the hero, when someone is doing something good and right and just, that is when that song is used. And this song is played presumably by the variant Loki, right? Who I'll just, everybody's seen this episode, I'll just start calling Lady Loki. Uh, Ah, that's what I that's what I had in my nose too. Is but that yeah, not I guess obvious. like just the you know popular nomenclature? Is that I I don't know. I haven't done a lot of uh, I, okay. I watched this thing. I did a little bit of research on a high school, and I I sat and I compiled feedback, and I sat down <laughs> to talk with you. Oh, well, it's the obvious choice, right? Lady Loki, the alliteration works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so clearly, Lady Loki fashions herself the hero here. Which to me says the TVA, if I'm to buy into maybe this bad guy is actually a little bit of a good guy, and I can see that based on what the TVA is doing, which we'll talk about in a bit, uh, you have to start wondering, like, okay, what does what is the purpose of the TVA uh, really? Are they, what are the consequences of the decisions they're making? Things like that. And that's the, immediately what I thought when I heard this very sort of off tone song in a in an ep an episode that starts with what you think is the villain yeah i, I mean they definitely i so i, I i'm not sure because like the other thing is like you know loki is the goddess in this case of mischief so there is something interesting and like subversive to playing a heroic anthem about sure. people rising to the occasion to to be a hero if you are engaging in villainy. But like yeah. the I mean, come on, two episodes in, they're really coding the TVA with a lot of darker shades. Uh, like, you know, when they're talking about like when 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 Loki's reciting the benefits of the time canister sanitizers and mm -hmm. he's like, oh, it does this and that just so the time can heal its wounds. Sounds like it's just disintegrating a whole bunch of people to me. Yeah. And like order versus chaos, you know, like uh, like it, are we talking chaos and, and like some kind of eldritch God? Are we talking chaos like chaotic good? Because I think that if this Loki is trying to do something to destabilize the sacred timeline, I mean, I just think all that stuff is loaded. Like when I hear about this stuff, it starts to sound culty. It's authoritarian. And then, yeah. And and then when it's like, oh, well, there's these these divine things that created everything and they're the ones we can trust. But don't know that we you can't actually commune with them. They, you just have to right. believe us that they're they know better and, and we're the ones that interpret their will. And this, that's going to have to be good enough for you. Like that just sets all kinds of alarm bells ringing in my head. So yeah, for sure, uh, it almost feels like they're giving away a bit much, <laughs> I to know. be honest. But we only have but, four more uh, episodes. 
in this. That's what I'm saying. These episodes really, these, these, these are essentially like long movies. So yeah, yeah at the end of your first act, you should kind of have a good idea of who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. And I think if you're paying attention and, and you're not, you're not the background watching, you're getting a good idea of who's who here. Mm hmm. Right, Not then, that everyone in the TVA is evil, because I think the vast majority yeah. of people who are just doing their jobs are probably decent time entities. But sure. I'm not sure, sure about this, jar, this judge. Uh, yeah, Ravenna. Or the R Slayer. Is that Ravona? Is that her name? Yeah, might, might, be, might be evil or yeah. evil adjacent or, or doing, doing some banality of evil type stuff. All right, Loki reviews some of the basics of his TVA training, and then Mobius comes by and tells him, hey, there's been an attack, gives him this jacket to wear, which says variant on the back. Very funny. I'm not, I'm not sure how he saw what it said, but he seems to know. Uh, Loki's briefed on the situation, which includes information about a bunch of other Lokis that they've captured before. Uh, they don't know as much about the one that they're chasing, though. Yeah, uh, this is where, like, so much of this stuff is just straight up Rick and Morty. The whole like, oh, these Loki variants have like slight or maybe sometimes not so slight. And they show like a monstrous Loki. It's set. Yeah, it, it's very like I said, this is very Council of Ricks. Like there are, it's actually really funny to watch a lot of people um, who I know professionally that disdain Rick and Morty and thinks it's all stupid bullshit. Just fall over themselves, praising how innovative and cool this is, because this is literally just Rick and Morty with the fucking serial numbers filed off, man. Yeah, like this is all very, very Council of Rick stuff, um, finite curve of the timeline kind of business. And but it also sets us up for the when, you know, Loki reveals uh, herself to be a goddess at the end, then it's like, oh, well, yeah, if you can have a monstrous Loki, then for damn sure you can have one as gender bent you can have a frost giant that was born oh, of a sure. frost girl instead of a frost boy. Um, but yeah. And they set up uh, a I lot more like uh, Nexus stuff here. Um, they talk about the Nexus events and, and what happens when, you know, it branches past the red line. Uh, that's when they can no longer reset the the Nexus event. And and this just serves to, like, set up the stakes for a scene later where they're counting down and, you know, Loki's stalling and, and Mobius is indulging him, all that kind of stuff. Do you believe this stuff at face value? Because the thing is, is here's another like take it out of matter of faith. Like, well, reality is still intact. So apparently the red line has never been reached. So like, are we really sure that if we eat of this fruit that we will, <laughs> you know, attain the knowledge of good and evil or like what? I, I just think that it's it's interesting that we're just taking this. This is all the rules. Well, the rules say if you get past the red line, everything ends. Well, Obviously, that's never happened. So how do you know that? Um, or is that yeah. red line just mean it's going to get outside of the timekeeper's control, which is a whole different thing than reality ending? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it asks questions about like what happened initially to create the TVA, right? Because if it's never happened, um, because if it did happen, it would be out of their control to put that genie back in the bottle then how did they put the genie back in the bottle and create the TVA and get down to one sacred timeline in the first place, you know? Right. Right. And so, is that like I, like I said last week is like, I'm not even sure that's happened because there's yes. all, and they're begging all these questions when Loki's like, we're from the future. All right, wait, are we actually from the, the future? The Like who the hell knows what the, with this finite timeline and these people, you know, like the end is known, but the future is not. What the hell is that all about? Does that mean that like they are the one they are the only ones that have free choice? And they even say that in the episode. Loki's like, well, it sounds like we're the only ones that actually have any kind of freedom. And so they're all putting the stuff mm -hmm. um, on the table. This is also a scene where Loki broke down like the detailed differences and different illusion magic. Yeah. And I bet dollars to donuts that that's going to be very plot. That's going to come back in late in the third act that there's going to be multiple Owen Wilson's. And because of the, uh, the, the slight differences in casting illusions versus duplication, it's going to allow Loki to know which one is which or Owen Wilson vice versa. I, I, I guarantee yeah. goddamn T this is going to be important, even though it seems like just Loki being pedantic. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the best way to disguise uh, important information is to put it in the mouth of some asshole you don't really want to listen to. Yep, yep. 
Uh, all right, Mobius keeps Loki on track by dangling a, a carrot, I guess, in front of him. This meeting with the timekeepers. Uh, they go back to 1985, where Mobius explains why they can't just travel back to before the attacks to stop them, and then Loki proves he's been paying attention by reciting the use of these reset charges. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they go in and investigate this tent where the attack happened, and Loki you know, does this whole ruse where he says, oh, it's a trap, and if you go outside, you'll end up just like them. Mobius doesn't believe him, uh, figures out that he's just uh, talking shit, and then decides, hey, let's reset the timeline. I love that scene where Owen Wilson's just kind of looking at him with the eyes narrowed for like several seconds, yeah. the timelines ticking down. Nah, he's lying. Nah, <laughs> this is, uh, there's nobody out there. Uh, and it's almost like... Um, it adds a little bit of patheticness to Loki. Like you really can't even do one mission mm. just straight up. Like he there's has no, no, no sense of like, Hey, I'll bide my time. And then right. when the time is right, I'll make this plan and get, make my escape. No, he just goes immediately for it. It's funny. Cause this feels a lot like playing secret Hitler <laughs> with a group of friends <laughs> Yeah, because you've always got the person who is pulling some kind of crazy shit like like that? Mm -hmm. uh, I I can think of the times where we've all done it, but I remember memorably the one time where, for whatever the luck of the draw, you had never been a fascist, you had never been dealt a fascist card, and you were using that as evidence as that you will never be a fascist. It's like thirteen times in a row, and I'm like, man, again, again. And it like I was I was like, like I cannot believe you guys are like taking but like, you know, whatever it's like. But but like, yeah, the fact that like Loki, that's his move, man. So he's always going to do it. Yeah. And if I don't know, like if you're I, I wonder what the strategy is, because obviously he's got a lot of experience with this. Like he is the trickster God. So how does he ever do his tricks? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a there's a there's a there's a trick to this. And I guess maybe if you just trying shit all the time that you get people like looking like used to looking at the surface level and then you start building that to like layer the it's going to be I think it's going to be fun because I, I feel like the, yeah. there's no way they're they're doing all this kind of messy shit without going try genuinely try to blow our minds once or twice in the series so I, I really hope they do hope so because I think that'll be a lot of fun and I don't know I will say this that like maybe the people that are really really beaten at the edges of the bushes trying to find all the secrets of the show maybe might be ruining the magic act a little bit for themselves and that's fine I'm just saying that like gosh I see a lot of people watch shows like this and then get to the end of it and they figured out everything and then they're like oh that feel felt perfunctory well fuck it did yeah you had 10 million people on the internet trying to solve this puzzle and so um, I'm going to be reading the speculation and go to but like I, I, I know what I'm getting myself into and I won't complain when <laughs> when when I figure Loki out before it's ready for me to. Was it this show that we were talking about in terms of leftovers and how one of the like one of the guys who's created this was a fan of the leftovers and wanted to do some. Yes. Type of thing, because when yeah, I think of the leftovers, guy. I think of let the mystery be. I think of mm -hmm. don't try and figure out what happened to the 2% because it's we're never going to tell you. Is there going to be a little bit of that element in here? Like, don't look for the larger trick that Loki is trying to pull here because that's not what this show is about. This show is about morality and redemption and all those kinds of things that Loki's story has been about in the past. I hope so. I hope so. Because like the, th the fun thing about the, the leftovers is there was tons of things where you could delve into Nat Geo articles and right. submarine Axis launch Monday. codes yeah. and all kind. Yeah. The Axis Monday concepts and all this other stuff. And at the end, like, I don't I don't know that those didn't ever pay out. But like, that's not what I remember about yeah. the leftovers. And I think that that would be the best way to ape the, the leftovers is to have all this complex stuff. But like what you really want to know is what's in Loki's heart. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the thing. And that's you can be exactly. a, a lot more inscrutable about that kind of stuff and still keep people, you know, beating the bushes of the, these larger mysteries that the show itself isn't that interested in. Or if it is, it's, it's just to launch. Yeah, you know, like I, a lot of people, I got a piece of feedback last week where, you know, we were wondering, it's like, yeah, I wonder if like Doctor Strange is going to be like the big standard bearer of the MCU going forward with this multiverse stuff. And someone like derisively, well, I don't know, they might just poke in gentle funds like, oh, I don't know, guys, uh, uh, the, the title of the Doctor Strange next movie is uh, Multiverse of Madness. Gee, I wonder if it's going to be taken to, like, 
yeah, oh, clearly, okay. clearly that's what they're that's what they're intending. Um, yeah. So it should be. I just say I just expect it. To, I, I want like one or two genuine twists to take me by surprise and I want them to be fun. And I don't think that's too much yeah. to ask. And I think the show is capable of delivering it. Sure. Uh, so let's go to the next scene where Mobius meets with the judge. Uh, she's on his case about his unorthodox methods, but he insisted, oh, I'm using Loki to learn about the variant that we're chasing. And then he asks about the timekeepers and the judge says, oh, they're doing just fine. You know, don't, don't worry if we're, <laughs> you'll never meet them. Uh, essentially is what she says. He says he's never met them. In fact, uh, and then she gives him one final chance with Loki sends him off with kind of a warning. Hey, if this goes wrong, there's not much I can do for you. Ominous especially with the way that the end of this episode turns out. Yeah. Um, they're there. So yeah, you, you, you pretty much nailed it. Like this whole, like this does feel very much like some kind of cult, you know, like, Oh no, you can't see or meet a leader. They're too busy. They're all doing the right things. All true. And also they, they have their eye on you, you know, like they're, they're deeply invested in what you're doing and it's all of you. Like I've, I've, I recognize this sales pitch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, did you make, if anything, her, uh, him uh, getting that pin that said Franklin D. Roosevelt High School on it? I did not. So that's the one thing I knew a lot of people would be talking about. So I looked into it and there's this really complicated theory people are working on that this is like the harbinger of Molecule Man. Which it, is it an obscure me. hero slash villain in the Marvel Universe. But I think, okay, I, I, I think it's all bullshit. I think y'all are overlooking, they're way overthinking this. Because the, like, if you do a search, like, there's, there, if you search for, like, Franklin D. Roosevelt Marvel, there's no results. But this is the most famous real-life high school of, of, is in Brooklyn, New York. And in the MCU, Steve Rogers, one Captain America, hails from Brooklyn. Mm. And I think they're suggesting because there's one of the big questions coming out of episode one is like, how did Steve Rogers do this crazy time loop where he got he, he, he became a variant for 50 plus years going back to make time with his old sweetheart after he set everything back? Right. Like, how the hell did he get away with that with the TVA breathing down everyone's neck? And I think this is to suggest that Steve inked a deal with the TVA to get some kind of exception because of his service to the sacred timeline. That he's the That's other what agent I think she's talking means. about. Yeah. 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 Huh. Um, I, I think that's what they're hinting at. I think All it's right. nothing more complicated than answering some of these questions that people obviously had because in game was so fucking timey wimey. And yeah. how are they trying to sit? I think this is just a little easy. Uh, they, they might not even like make anything bigger of it than that. But like, I think I, I think all this people trying to suggest that this is going to be some new MCU villain and stuff. I think that's way, way off base. It's just a Captain America nod. That's that's, that's I mean, my I think people opinion. are like right to be looking for the next characters that Marvel's going to introduce. One hundred percent. They killed a lot of them. Right. Uh, they need to mm -hmm. replenish their ranks. So I understand the, the reasons behind why you might be looking for that stuff. But I like that theory a right. lot. Steve Especially Rogers since stuff. Franklin D. Roosevelt, if you know anything about him, you know that secretly he had a severe, he was a very puny physically, you know, mm. had a, a, a condition where he could stand only with difficulty, was in a wheelchair. The press kind of hit it. His super, his alter ego was, you know, President, you know, Delano Roosevelt, who strode the globe as this giant and made these deals, won World War II, et cetera, et cetera. I think there's like some nice uh synthesis between uh, uh steve rogers who famously puny not physically impressive but became a giant yeah. because of super so i think there's some like neat synergy there with franklin roosevelt and steve rogers as well but uh i could nice. be wrong could be the harbinger of molecule man and everybody <laughs> can point and laugh at me we'll see yeah cool i like it uh i also noticed some but probably just you know fun imagery stuff they're doing here these water rings on the table when he lays down this glass, it like he doesn't lay it right on the water rings. He lays it next to it in sort of an overlapping figure eight symbol, which mm. I thought was just, you know, a little nod to the Mobius, Mobius name. Um, yep. And the theremin music in this scene is really cool, which it has like a 1950s sci fi of the era of, of the aesthetic sure. of this place. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I, I don't know, all that stuff was really adding up to a, a real cool scene for me. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we get a walk and talk with Mobius and Loki, during which Mobius sort of confounds Loki's attempts to prove that he's the superior intellect, and then tells Loki, hey, you're on your last chance here, bud. And it's fun because um, both characters are nakedly trying to manipulate each other. Yeah. And like even like that's the dialogue. Like you can't manipulate me. I'm manipulating you. Well, I'm 10 <laughs> steps ahead of manipulating you. Oh, yeah. Well, this whole thing has just been a manipulation of you. <laughs> and uh, right. Yeah. And there's, here's a choose your own adventure. A, I'm manipulating you or B, I'm manipulating you for my own purposes. Choose your. I, I thought that stuff was was really well done. And it is. like at the end, like Tom Hiddleston does a really good job of showing Loki kind of like unsure. And and if they are doing more, if Loki does have some grand plan that this is all part of, they're doing a really good job of disguising it in these moments with his acting, because I'm feeling those moments where he he feels like, oh, shit, this person entity. I don't know what it is. Just got the better of the God of mischief, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It has him off balance anyway. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, So Mobius tells Loki to go over each of these case files and sits them at a desk reviewing paperwork. Loki gets super bored and he wanders over to the record keeper and tries to get a bunch of files. He can't. He can only have access to his own file. So he grabs that and he sits back down and uh, finds a detailing of the destruction of Asgard and uh, some variance energy detected at it, which kind of gets his uh, brain juice flowing there. I like how they set you up to think that like he's actually having another realization of like his... You know, like he's having a sad moment about Asgard getting wiped out, and I think he is also. But yeah, is he? Because like, the, like when the guys acknowledges that's a sad, he's like, oh yeah, it's terrible, tragic. Anyway, like I, I, yeah, I think I that's think that, the cover. I think he's like trying to play hmm. off his emotional connection huh. to it because he can knows he can be manipulated with it, right? I thought it was this us it's trying to throw us the audience off because it's like we're gonna have Maybe. another wooby Loki, but it's like, yeah, his mom and his brother that he cared about is already dead. Like, what's this going to like the, all the other Ask Guardians? He probably saw himself as superior over. Like, does he really care? Because right, he's still like this yeah. is a. I think this episode's a good reminder. Loki's still a bad guy. Like him oh. capering around all the doomed people of Vesuvius kind of lets you know that it's you know like he's <laughs> not. His his morality and empathy is not where you'd want it to be. Uh huh. So he takes his findings over. To, oh, oh, by the way, I'm digging the the look of this. It, it, I can only describe it as like a large hotel lobby kind of look. You, you know when the, those hotels have like the big atrium area, and you yeah, look up yeah, and yeah, it has yeah. like the elevators like the that go up hotels. and then layer after layer of balconies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what this looks like to me, and that is kind of the yeah. perfect like corporate feel for this timey wimey place of of yeah this i don't know if it's infinite but it's certainly a large corporate place yeah it's the timeline of everything that could possibly happen to everyone okay so it's probably infinite uh anyway <laughs> well, i don't know they they prune the shit out of it so you know is it still infinite if you pr- if if it's just a single sacred timeline yeah good question uh loki takes his findings over to mobius and tells him hey the variant's hiding in apocalypses and he does he does so with this metaphor that ruins everyone's lunches um and then he asks mobius to take him to one of these apocalypses to test his theory mobius doesn't really trust him enough but he does trust that loki loves to be right yeah it's a good it's a good scene and i actually think it's a really yeah. great concept the idea that you can camp out at these apocalyptic moments and even if you fuck up and make a minor change the timeline it doesn't matter because everyone and everything in this area is about to be destroyed yes so that's a that's as far as i know an innovation to time travel lore and good job good job that you can still do one in 2021 yeah no and the rules they've set up it works really tightly uh mm-hmm. i like it and I really love this next scene where they go through a time portal to Pompeii in 79 AD, which is when Mount Vesuvius erupts, um, kills everybody there. And Mobius wants to be, you know, extremely subtle about the way they tamper with the timeline. So, you know, he's he's wants to be needlessly subtle here, uh, and which Loki goes on right. to prove by going full uh, future apocalypse prophet mode. It doesn't even make a blip on the the Tim pad, uh, which is like this variance meter that mm-hmm. Mobius has. And they come back to HQ and they dig through hi- the history to find natural doomsdays, which, of course, they get bored about, uh, bored with and just 
go on a walk. Because there's a lot of them, apparently. Yeah. Uh, this yeah, is yeah, a great yeah. scene. This is probably the best scene in the episode, in my opinion, because it's so much fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, him like letting because like, he's like, oh, we should start a small disturbance, maybe make some animal noises. And like Loki just runs and like lets all the goats free and jumps on the <laughs> cart and starts it's like you said, Old Testament doom prophesying. Yeah. And it's uh, it's got to be a good feeling for him, because as he essentially dams the whole town, the volcano explodes. And there, it's it's nice seeing like the pyroclastic cloud come closer and closer as Loki's like, you see, you see. And you're like, All right, well, yeah, how's this? But obviously they get out. Um, but yeah. you're right. It was a fun. It was a really fun scene and uh, got to got to do some period costuming. They're really I noticed that I ever since I someone pointed this out to me in the Mandalorian, this 3D stage effect that they're using, uh, it's essentially fancy rear screen projection. I'm seeing it everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. The volume space, like the volume space was the temporal library. The volume space was Pompeii the because vol- it's just like there's a little bit of like. What do you call that? Like color correction maybe that you just can't quite it's 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 a little bit washed out it's a tiny shade that 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 um gives it away from like a real background at least that i i'm, huh, okay. I'm seeing maybe it's just, just when they're compositing it poorly but um maybe i haven't it's, really it's, been looking for it yeah every uh, yeah like every time ever since someone sent us the making of uh I, I just feel like i'm seeing it everywhere now gotcha i mean hey man if if you got a hammer you're gonna use it to hit nails screws whatever you got yeah, and if you want to believe uh, hobbits are three feet tall, just never watch the special features on the Lord of the Rings DVDs, right. you know? Like, it'll, <laughs> it'll ruin that for you right quick. Uh, this does raise the question of, like, what do they define as a natural disaster? And they, or, or, sorry, an apocalypse or a doomsday. Uh, and they do give some sort of definition here. They say it has to be naturally occurring. It has to be sudden with no warning and no survivors. And I don't, the, the sticking point to me is no survivors. What does that mean? Does that mean, because presumably everyone knows about a hurricane, right? Uh, I and thought a hurricane was an odd choice for the, one of these type of things. You know? Even if it kills everyone in its path, the people still know about the apocalypse that happened. It's not, it doesn't have no survivors. I, yeah, like, maybe at the epicenter, like at that Walmart or whatever future Walmart. Like, I, but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. like even... But, I guess like they're they're depositing that in 2050 with uh, current climate change trends that you're going to have such horrifically devastating hurricanes that it, they literally could scour for dozens of miles around every bit of human life because that's what you need. Yeah. Like if it's going to be fucking Pompeii, then, mm-hmm. you know, because I just don't buy that. Like if you just hunkered down at a wall, like if 100 people hunkered down on a Walmart and a category five hurricane direct hit it, I don't buy that all 100 people die. Yeah. You know, it, it's not like a superheated cl- uh, cloud of steam moving at the speed of sound. Like, yeah, that'll mm-hmm. do it. But I, I thought it was I thought it was a little weird. But maybe these are super yeah. category eight hurricanes that you get in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they're, I don't know, category 10. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but I don't Al-Bor know. I was, was going right. with, you know, wherever the show wants to take me on the doomsday stuff. Mm-hmm. Just let it go there. Uh, then Loki is waxing nostalgic about 90s jet skis as they kind of just sit and talk here. Um, and, and Mobius uses this, this 90s jet ski connection to talk about his own glorious purpose. Uh, Loki talks about free will, the nature of good and evil. And it reminds Mobius that he called him a scared little boy, which leads Mobius to connect some dots. And he runs over to the archives and he fetches the kablooey gum that the variant left in the cathedral last episode and claims that they now have two variables, Doomsday and Kablooey. Mm-hmm. And they'll go, in- they'll go cross-reference those two things because Kablooey was apparently only in production from 2045 to 2050, whenever. Uh, and so now yeah. they're looking for just those Doomsdays that he could be hiding in. Yeah, and that, that narrows things down when you're talking about all of human history. Very uh, much. For sure. Um, but we, there's a lot of, this is pretty, another dense, um, exposition scene, yeah. but also just really kind of like, again, prepares us for the idea that TVA might be villainous because, yep. you know, like what is Owen Wilson waxing about here, about it, freedom. Yeah. And, you know, uh, 
the the fact that like everything is chaos and i a good thing came out of that chaos and i'm fortunate that i blah you know expressing all that and then contrasting that to well if there's no chaos if everything's just all order then that's boring and it's 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 unfree you know um and the fact that no one true no one bad is truly bad and no one is good is truly good if that's true and probably is that applies to the timekeepers, which means so what are mm-hmm. what ways are they bad? Like I said, they're they're giving away, it feels like they're giving yeah. away a lot of the store in this the second episode. But um I mean I can easily you know. guess a way that they would be bad. I mean, best intentions, you know. Uh sure. They want to prune for a specific timeline, which necessarily excludes all other timelines that could exist. Uh yeah. thereby, you know, denying existence to far more people then they actually preserve existence for. So that in itself could be inherently evil. Uh, yeah. And that's something that they explored in like Westworld season three, the idea that if you pick winners, you by necessity have yes. to pick losers. And is that fair for the losers? You know, right. Like if everyone could be a winner, great. But like if only 90% of you and then 10% of people have to fail hard or be wiped out of existence, like in, you know, some kind of bullshit Thanos snap type of deal. But a what the fuck and b who the fuck gets to decide who those winners and losers are so i think that's all and in this case it's reversed hit. like 99.999 repeating percent of people are being expunged from existence uh yeah. in order to preserve it for the 0. 0.00 repeating one who are yeah. being preserved on this sacred timeline you know there's an infinite sure. number of timelines that should spawn off and they prune them all so yeah before they even get to exist before they even get to start um it yeah. seems seems pretty bad seems pretty bad seems pretty unfree right um and it does you know it also raises questions about uh the timeline itself like what does the end of time even mean um what is mm-hmm. the destination we're striving toward if time is infinite uh how can we ever reach the end of it what is, what is this like oh we'll meet at the end of the end of time in in the piece or something whatever he says there it's like you're yeah. striving toward a goal that is inherently unreachable mm-hmm. uh so yeah i i don't know and the fact that you know nobody that we know has actually seen these timekeepers um also adds to the sinister feeling here for me yep. anyway yep i don't like i don't like putting faith in institutions i can't see <laughs> Yeah, so as I said, they, they travel here, or well, they go to the judge and they say, hey, we've narrowed it down uh, to a, a time and a date, a time and a location here, it's Haven Hills, Alabama, which was destroyed in this hurricane, and, and we need a task force to go check it out. And she's reluctant to uh, give him that, but his excitement convinces her, I guess, his enthusiasm for the job. And she warns him that, hey, if this goes wrong, I can't help you. I, I, this is it. This is the last chance for both of you. And so Mobius grabs Loki and they get another uh, briefing. They they like to do briefings in this show a lot. I think we've already had at least three, maybe four. Yeah. Uh, B-15 tells him, okay, we're going to prune any Lokis we find and watch out for traps because the variant has stolen several reset charges. And then they go to Haven Hills. Uh, and she also talks yeah. about like where these people are are sheltered, right? This rocks cart superstore in the warehouse being used as a shelter. It's a class ten apocalypse, which we don't have any context for that, I guess. Um, but surely the apocalypse number goes higher than a class ten, right? Or maybe this is like a Defcon thing. Does it go to class one? That's the worst. Yeah, I wish I'd I wish I'd uh, freeze framed when he was going over some of the um, dossier stuff yeah. for like, like what know, was Ragnarok. I think. Yeah, they all had this kind of like, um, oh man, what is that? Uh, uh, what what's that? that? There's like this shared reality kind of like Wikipedia uh, CSP, um, where they have like you know they they classified entities as like what kind of threat they are, like Euclid or Cap Jupiter or something like that. Like it, it seems like there is some kind of what I'm saying is this this they have some kind of absolute like Richter scale for disasters, and I it, yeah. Maybe it goes higher than 10, but I got to feel like 10 means no survivors, absolute destruction um, or or what, you know? OK, uh, if it's not at least like total devastation and loss of all people, then how the hell can you guarantee that there's not going to be any variants? 
energy created there. So does the class not factor in like magnitude of or the number of dead? Because yeah, Hurricane I mean, ain't gonna kill that many people. Not nearly as many as a lot of other apocalypses I can think of. Maybe you got class and then scale, like class ten scale county state country planet because okay. like the i noticed the asgardian was one was like planet, superstore <laughs> was it was like a planet it said like planet like a complete planetary destruction or something so yeah yeah like it's it's one through ten how fucked up things are and then what scale the fucked upness is maybe i, don't I know. imagine we're gonna be this touring prob- several of these because that's the thing about yeah. this variant right they lady loki has nowhere else to hide but in these apocalypses so now that they've tracked that uh, they they know where to find her, so we're going to be going to these apocalypses all the time. And it's a think, great hook for also, like Marvel, who loves to do big, flashy uh, graphics, right? CGI stuff. Yeah, this is going to be yeah. perfect for that. I wonder if there's going to because, like, the thing is that they've established that if you don't have a, a another factor to narrow it down, that like just civilizational destruction on a, on across the universe in all recorded history is an impossible thing to go through. It's, it's trying to find a needle in the haystack. So it's like, I wonder yeah. how they'll establish the other confounding variable, especially when the variant, the, the, the two Loki variants are in, you know, cahoots or at least in, you know, working together for the next episode of nothing else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good question. Um, so yeah, they, they go back there uh, to Haven Hills and they go to the warehouse where, the residents are taking shelter. B-15 wants to keep her eyes on Loki and insists that he pair off with her. Mobius objects, but Loki Loki seems to be okay with it. So um, he, he's trying to earn their trust, is what he says. And the variants I, watching... I love them. how how Mobius also, before they leave, tries to offer Loki his trademark double daggers back, and like B-15 snatches him like, absolutely uh, not. No. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 she's appropriately uh, skeptical of the God of Mischief here. Yeah. Um. So they yeah, the variant is watching them sort of and sets this 20 minute timer. He's watching him through screens. Uh, sorry, mm-hmm. she's watching him through screens. Ah, I like how you just defaulted defaulted to the, the person of action there being a male. Yeah, I Damn, saw what you did there. talking about this being Loki and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get what are it. you going to do? The, my brain, my brain is hardwired. I'm trying to soft wire mm-hmm. it. <laughs> Uh, why, why is it, this is, this is a great line. I love it. Why is it that the people you can't trust are always saying, trust me? I love that line from Mobius. And it's so true. I think it's, it's, it's a selection bias. You don't remember the times your friends say, trust me, and then they don't betray you. It's mm. the ones where they say, trust you, and then they immediately betray you. Those are the ones that stick out as red letter days. <laughs> that could be true. It also could be true that the people who are trying to exploit trust always have trust on the mind and they're thinking true. of ways to use it. And so they mention it more often. Yeah. But it could be, yep. yeah, confirmation bias, whatever bias that is. Uh, B15 and Loki search the store and they find this guy they think could possibly be Loki. And then, oops, uh, B15 knocks him out and reveals that she's actually the variant. Yeah, um, I I can't remember if we've seen Loki possess people in this way. Um, he calls it what enchanting them. Uh, I mean, the only time. Well, it's a good question. Like, is that what he did to C20 at the beginning of this? I think so. OK, I think I, I, I think that like but but also that wasn't Loki to begin with. And I'm, I'm wondering, like, what is the. Uh, and this is the subtle differences in the magic that Loki is probably talking about. But why is it more beneficial to like literally possess an Earthling than it is to like disguise yourself with an illusion to be one of these people? Because then you actually have yeah. presumably your strength and powers as a god. That's the other thing. It's like you know Bubba, who he Loki will eventually tussle with, is is, is a big dude, right? But yeah. like he ain't the Hulk. It's not a god. He ain't the Hulk. <laughs> Yeah, he's not the Thor. No. He's certainly not Thanos. So, like, what does it mean? And I, I, I did, I do think that they're doing this thing where, like, I never bought that Loki was actually in threat. You know, like maybe he didn't yeah. want to kill these civilians, but also, like, I'm not. 
it was very hard for me to square this Loki with the Loki capering around Pompeii. Like, haha, you're all going to be dead. You're all going to be dead because like, why wouldn't he just rip these people's heads off? They're all going to be dead anyway. The second they're, but yeah. like, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I, yeah, like most of the times when we're watching a Marvel movie and like someone's punching someone else, I have a pretty good idea of like, you know, who's being hurt or what. But this, I, I'm, I'm really not sure because it seems like the only reason Loki wouldn't do that, I guess, is because the story needs uh, Lady Loki to monologue a bit. Um, yeah, I guess if I'm being generous, I would say he doesn't want to upset Lady Loki. He wants to join Lady Loki, and so he doesn't really he want wants to get her, keep her, her talking. Ass. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're probably right. It, but what I don't understand right is why there. this is a human scale fight. Why this is not a god scale fight? Because why, why Lady Loki isn't throwing god sized punches? Right. She's throwing Bubba size punches. That doesn't make much sense. One one solution would be that uh, if they had God size budget for every episode, they they <laughs> they would do that. But this is a this is a six yeah, hour television God series. Punch not, was Pompeii. Yeah, not a two point five hour Marvel movie just going to make two billion dollars worldwide. So true. Uh, all right. Yeah, I mean, maybe we should jump through quite a bit of the end here because this is all happening pretty rapid. Um, and you kind of need the whole thing to really make sense of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mobius is taken over to C20, who's tied up and, and just repeating, it's real, it's real. We don't know That's what the commander is. that was kidnapped in the beginning of the, the episode. Yeah. Um, and then the variant jumps to this other body as Loki tries to get him to, to show himself. And I'm using the him intentionally here because we still think it's a him, right? Mm -hmm. And then Loki tells the variant that he plans to overthrow the timekeepers and offers uh, a sidekick position essentially to the variant. And the variant says no and re uh, reset charge is planted. We go back to B uh, C20 who says uh, that she gave away information on how to find the timekeepers uh, to the variant. And then they radio B15 who wakes up. And then in the final scene here, Loki asks what the variant wants um, a couple of times, actually, as they fight. Um, and then the variant reveals herself to be... I, I, I wasn't sure if I should know who this was at the time. I'm like, I just put some lady in my notes because I'm like, okay, this is this a manifestation of a different timeline Loki? Is this like a superhero or a super villain that I don't know about from the timeline. I think uh, there's definitely, cause I, I remember, I, I think we were talking about this on some other stream where you know, it was like a week or two before the show came out and someone said that like, there was some indications that there was like a gender bent Loki. And in fact, some people were saying that like it was, this was going to be a bait and switch where it's like they use Tom Hiddleston to sell all, but like what it's going to all be about is this lady Loki character. And I'm like, that isn't, that sounds like, I mean, maybe, maybe they do it, and uh, but like it seems like you're going to piss off a lot of people that are hoping for this Loki and they get some yeah, other yeah. Loki. Um, and obviously that's not true. I mean, Tom's been in uh, a shit ton these first few. So, but I also vaguely remember, because I did not read in, into this, and again, I'm not a Thor fan, but I also vaguely remember that there was a gender-bent Loki in the comics. So there I'm is, sure yeah. there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can find and speculate about if you go through some of these uh, newer newer Thor plots but uh, I haven't done that so yeah uh, uh, I haven't either ride. and I probably won't I'm just sort of taking the series as it comes and mm -hmm. yeah so and now I know that this is Lady Loki and there's a version of her in the comics uh, she drops the the reset charges a shitload of them like the whole thing the whole warehouse is revealed to be just full of them drops them through time portals causing just a ton of red line branches to come off of the sacred timeline. The TVA springs into action, trying to prune a bunch. And the uh, Lady Loki goes through another time portal and Loki follows her through. Even got the judge uh, getting her baton out of the arsenal to, to it's like <laughs> yeah. all, all hands on fucking timeline kind of situation. Speaking um, of the judge consequences for losing Loki here that, you know, uh, Mobius was on his yeah. last, uh, chance i don't know what this means it would be interesting if they'll like if they'll just like purge this mobius and there'll be another mobius instantly snaps into his place because <laughs> we yeah, talked about this last week that, being, that right 
that was one how like yeah because mobius in mobius is essentially like in the symbol being a fit infinity as you pointed out earlier in this episode and like the early in uh, our the early incarnations of this character was him being an infinitely repeating clone series of himself in the tva so like i think that would be a fun thing to play around with um yeah that you know maybe the next mobius will be a little tougher on loki's and but uh or it'd be like resetting a Janet in the yeah in the good place <laughs> in the good place that they come back and there'll be a subtle like priority or, or personality shift. I think that resetting would be kinda... a Derek maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's where that's what I really meant. I couldn't remember what the Dereks yeah. were called, but yeah, I, I and and I do think this guy that's running the show is is definitely pilfering from a lot of that. You know, it's not you know obviously Rick and Morty is the one that they that that they got started on, but like it wouldn't surprise me if they've also watched The Good Place and are stealing some ideas from that too. Oh yeah, um, great! Show, I really like the sweeper fight. The uh, you know where they're just throwing Roombas and uh, I don't know long neck Orbex or whatever the hell, uh -huh. uh, using them as nunchucks and stuff. I thought that was you know it's not a god scale fight, but it was funny. I've never seen that happen before. It was uh, the god scale here is just the number of charges. I was I was shocked to see that many because I thought oh the variants got like three maybe that we've seen her no, take that and... a bunch. Yeah. Uh, a hundred like, hundreds. I don't know. A lot. I don't know if you look at it's it's tough to see. But like if you look at the like the damage it's doing to the timeline. I don't know how they contain it. Um, well, we I think might that's get to, the we might get point. to find out. We might right. get to. Yeah, we might get to find out what happens on with a red line, multiple red line events next episode. It's um, either that or as, my my guess is that this is a distraction that the TVA will be able to put down all these red lines but just barely and their resources will be so used up doing that that they'll miss something else that lady loki is doing. Ah, uh, and that's the the point the real point that loki the lady loki's trying to do. That's, I think so. that's an interesting idea. I do think that like um that Marvel is looking for a way to jailbreak this. Like they I I don't think Marvel likes a purely deterministic universe and you know again with Doctor Strange multiverse of madness like whatever happens at the end of this I think is a mess that Doctor Strange is going to have to contend with it seems. Yeah. So I'm expecting like it could be because like one thing that could happen is like multiple red line failures happen and the universe is still here. Now, what do we mm -hmm. have a civil war in the TVA suddenly, you know, uh, like yeah. the judge goes to express her authority and like half the agents are like, well, you guys are all full of shit. What happens then? I think that could be interesting. Um, I'm just not sure. What, yeah, what, I, mean, I have no idea what the pacing of this should be, because honestly, this is way faster. Like Loki. Joining with Lady Loki in the second episode, that's pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, we don't have a lot of time in this series. It's it's one of those short uh, British series, right? Yeah. I know it's only two episodes in, but I feel like this is the best paced Marvel show that we've had. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there was pacing problems in... When they when uh, when they finally started trying to wrench the WandaVision into some conventional marvel plot it was too little that too late on that show for me yeah it but didn't yeah. work and then like i thought there was large stretches of like literally why uh in in captain america and falcon so or falcon winter soldier rather so i think again just two episodes in maybe there's going to be some some lulls to come but like this has been really well paced yeah so so that's what i'm getting at like i think it, you're exactly right um when you're talking about like it, you know the 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 good guy being sort of the bad guy here um and vice versa and the tva being this authoritarian regime the prunes 99 point repeating nines percent of of people from existence like in in my estimation like the tva is a force that needs to be taken down and the lady loki is working toward that goal and she's going to ultimately be shown to be the good guy um because of you know the horrible consequences that most people don't think about of what the TVA is actually doing. So, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see if it actually goes there. Maybe they have some other wrinkle that I haven't thought of, but you know, I've watched a lot of TV. I've thought about time travel and free will and the consequences of it quite a bit in many of yeah. our other podcasts. So that to me is like the blueprint of where this goes, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm open to being surprised and I'm, I would be kind of happy if they could take this somewhere else than, where I expect it to go. Oh, hundred percent. I, I honestly expect Marvel to be a little bit predictable because they're just not, I mean, they're not yeah. out there trying to be the leftovers literally. 
Mm -hmm. right because that show like a million people watched and they're trying to get more than that i think butts in a seat i don't even think that maybe like maybe it's a half a million people watching that contemporaneously but i yeah and if they can like if they can hit hit that gear way back i mean obviously i'm not going to be complaining but like i'm just not like just like i I burnt myself a little bit in the season one of mandalorian thinking that like oh this is going to be the gritty fucking bounty hunter and then (sighs) baby yoda showed up and that was great but it wasn't what i was i wasn't the more adult kind of serious darker side of star wars i was really expecting yeah so like ever since that i'm like i'm just going to pump the brakes if i'm thinking this is going to be like the fucking godfather citizen kane it's just going to be if if they can reliably hit like any of the in game infinity uh war type of beats, then I will be ecstatic. But yeah, are you holding out hope for Book of Boba Fett being the darker, grittier bounty hunter tale that we're all kind they, of you know? It would for? be ironic after they got all this other stuff out and they that they, they, they finally do like oh yeah, this is going to be the fucking heart. But like. That's just not Disney Plus, no, man. I don't think Disney not. Plus is genetically capable of giving us like a Logan yeah. or a Deadpool. Although I guess they're going to try. They're going to Marvel's act. Disney's going to do a Deadpool. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. We'll see. So, uh, But yeah, I, I like this episode. I like the, the potential consequences of everything that's happening. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes over the next four episodes. 100%. Anything else to add, or is that about it? No, we got uh, feedback. A lot of people uh, heeded our call to assemble and feedback. Marvel at baldmove.com is uh, the message, the, the mailbag we're using going forward. Do you care to do any of those? No, I don't care to, but I guess we should. <laughs> Marvel at baldmove.com is where you want to send this stuff. Let's start with Brent from San Diego, uh, which, of course, is an uh, old Dutch word for whale's vagina. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, glad you're taking time to cover this lunacy that will be Loki. I can't help but be blown away by the space slash atomic age style of the show, much of which seems to be borrowed heavily from early seasons of Legion, though no complaints. Just a funny thing I noticed, especially if either of you are Fallout players, the training video contains potentially an actionable copyright claim of Cappy from Fallout 4's Nuka World. Hmm. I'm blown away someone didn't catch this, but if intentional, it's a great little homage. Uh... I'm going to I'm going to cop a big nerd uh, fail here, and I've not played any of the Fallout series. I have not played them, uh, but I'm vaguely familiar. I've seen images of Cappy before, and yeah, it's pretty similar to the the clock here. Yeah, I do love this, like I said, Atomic Age uh, look and styling, and you're not wrong. It is very heavily like inspired by legion although i think uh, legion always felt like it was uh, one generation older than that or younger than that rather like it's like 60 70 kind of like spy chic like Mm -hmm. diabolique beastie boy video that kind of Mm. aesthetic Uh, whereas this is just straight up yeah like nuka cola kind of atomic age stuff Let's move on to tony's email first longtime listener and i'm thrilled you're doing full coverage of this show well you're welcome Secondly, I'm digging the show's timber and overall aesthetic, and when the writers and showrunners, uh, with these writers and showrunners, rather, I have confidence that they can pull it off. The point of this email is regarding the beginning of the episode during the 2012 callback with the Avengers. I think the real project guys mentioned this in their reaction to Eric Voss uh, from the new Rockstars, and his breakdown, it started showing Loki mocking Captain America when he walked by and was doing the robot. Well, the original from the film, he doesn't do these hand gestures, and it's a different take, apparently. The question is, what the hell does this mean in the grand scheme of things? Are we even watching the sacred timeline during this callback, or was the original movie not even part of the sacred timeline? Or was it just a director's choice and it means nothing? I, I so, about the difference between that very first scene with the Tesseract? Yeah, okay. where, where Loki's doing the robot to make fun of uh, uh, Captain America. Gotcha. I think they're suggesting that that was indeed a variant timeline and that's, you know, cause this isn't again, our Loki. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that like, this also might be this, this, this uh, Franklin Roosevelt high school pin to suggesting that like, yeah, what ta- what, what, what captain America did is a timeline, but I've also seen, you know, I was read I was fucking around in the Marvel Loki subreddit and there's people doing like, um, 
what what is that movie called about, about dreaming inception they're doing inception style like time diagrams showing the sacred timeline and the infinity war timeline and where loki brand and I, it all feels a little too much for me because like again like this is all very flat there is a single sacred timeline and you have an offshoot you have you have something that's out of another timeline but that other timeline no longer exists it's already been cleaned up by the tva Mm -hmm. so like i don't think we're actually creating paradoxes they're just recognizing that that was a paradox that got cleaned up i think is what you're supposed to understand like i don't remember that first scene from the first episode but like did didn't wasn't there tva soldiers there that did set a charge or you could presume once you've seen the episode that tva guys showed up there a minute or two later with the a sanitation charge he could because he's for yeah. sure a variant mm -hmm. and we know those variances for sure cause those spikes and they have to be cleaned up or they hit the red line and then all kinds of shit happen. so right i think i think that's why i thought some of those projects were a little bit misguided gotcha that you're never going to have a looping timeline at least until the tva is dethroned yeah. but i could be wrong i could be wrong um no, that makes sense i just think it's it's it doesn't make sense to uh, like try to do like a looper slash inception, you know, like like time diagram. I mean, it might in the back half of this thing. I don't know. Like th things might get weird now that the TVA has got a lot on their plate. Yeah, and I guarantee things are going to get fucking weird in like uh, Doctor Strange because yeah. the first one was <laughs> out like a bunch of timey wimey. It <laughs> right. was already plenty strange, although. It, it, it did have a bunch of time, like the whole final battle uh -huh. with the doorman, Dormammu, yeah. where it, like that, that, that took place in infinite time or could have like yeah. he wore down a demon with his time <laughs> right. bullshit uh, by pestering so like, him over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe the whole movie is going to be stuff like that. Like that would be a really like I would love to see like Marvel try to do like a full on fucking like uh, Groundhog Day. Like, yeah. like what like what if you had like 36 different recursions every five minutes? Uh, I think that would be an inherently cool, like throw 200 million dollars at that. I think that's a really cool idea. We'll see sure. if they do it. I mean, shit in game was halfway there. There's at least like 10 different time branches they're fucking around with. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now we have a real Marvel chronicler here. Uh, that's going to that's going to be the person that I am not. It's going to be the person steeped in the knowledge and it's going to take us through some some things that they've noticed, uh, some scholarship that they've done uh, and read. Uh, Sean, stepping up to do that for us, said, thrilled you decided did you. Let me start that again. Uh, thrilled you decided to jump on to season one of Loki. I thought I'd jump in with a neat comic connection to some upcoming MCU happenings. So this judge slash superior officer that Owen Wilson keeps talking to is Ravona Renslayer. And it will come as a surprise to no one that this character also has a comics counterpart. Ravona in the comics is not so closely a TVA associate, but is deeply entrenched in Marvel time shenanigans nonetheless. To understand the significance of this name drop, we have to take a detour. The MCU's biggest time traveler has to be Nathaniel Richards. Nathaniel Richards is a 20, sorry, 31st century native and blood descendant of Reed Richards or Victor Von Doom the specifics having been lost to time in various retcons. So Reed Richards, of course, is the leader of the Fantastic Four, mm. um, scientist extraordinaire, stretchy dude. Yeah. Uh, Victor Von Doom, everybody knows who, who Dr. Doom is, right? He's the, he's the dude in the full metal, full metal alchemist get up. Okay. Uh, so Nathaniel Richards, this 31st century son of one of these two gentlemen, uh, traveled back to ancient Egypt to rule as the king Rama Tut, only to eventually be deposed by his potential ancestor, Rich, Rich Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four. Following this defeat, Nathaniel would cross paths with his other possible father, Doctor Doom. Enthralled by Doom's style, Nathaniel would go on to adopt the guise of the Scarlet Centurion. He spent some time rolling around under that new name, went on to fight the Avengers, losing, discarding the Scarlet Centurion um, uh, like an internet troll discards an old alt. He would later find himself stranded far in the future, past even his own 31st century origin. In this far future, Nathaniel co-ops her technology and uses their strategic genius to become Kang the Conqueror. He conquers Earth and begins to, to uh, torment the Age of Heroes, which is in our current time era, to test his skills against foes like the Avengers. During his conquering the far future, Kang meets the daughter of one of the last kings of Earth, whose name is Ravona. All right, we finally caught up to Ravona here. Okay. Ravona and Kang would go on to have a very rocky relationship, sometimes together, sometimes as bitter enemies. I've had relationships like that. 
Kang himself would eventually grow wary of his conquests and take up the role of Immortus, Master of Time. In his final incarnation, Immortus would, generally speaking, work with our friends, the Timekeepers. Uh, and here's a, like some potential spoilers if he's right about the series. So if you don't, if you want to go on this completely blind, uh, now's a good time. This is the last email, so go ahead and switch off your podcast here. Are we cool? Are we cool? Are you cool. ready for here some some Marvel MCU spoilers potentially? Uh, Immortus also worked. Wait a second. Uh, to re- uh, so so he also worked at the Timekeepers to reverse the damage his earlier self did to the time stream. And Mortis also worked to keep the Avengers in check after it was revealed that left unopposed, the Avengers would often expand into a universe-conquering force of their own, a la the Freeman Jihad from Dune. That's interesting. The Avengers left without a sufficient challenge and opposition will just fucking mount up and take over the universe. Yeah, I can see He's Tony just, Stark doing that. <laughs> yeah, he was kind of like the whole suit of armor see. for the Earth. There's th- th- that kind of like good people with uh, need for control yeah. kind of horseshoe theory. There's definitely definitely that. Um, he specifically worked to orchestrate the dismantling and react- uh, reassembling of Vision slash White Vision, hoping, hoping to destabilize the Avengers and Wanda in particular. Hmm. That's interesting because we know they're going down the white vision route yeah. in this series. Um, following the eventual dismantling of the Avengers in the early 2000s, uh, one final Kang variant was revealed. This teenage version of Daniel saw his future as Kang slash Immortus and rejected it. He instead traveled to this low point in Avengers history and assembled the young Avengers using a protocol developed by the at t- the time deceased Vision. The team fe- featured Hulkling, Asgardian. Speed, Hawkeye the second, Patriot oh, stature. We don't need Iron another Lad. Hawkeye. No, we didn't even the need first the first Hawkeye. One. Is bad enough. Yeah, you got to have a butt of the team joke, you know. Fair. Uh, and an Iron Lad, which is Nathaniel in futuristic armor. Okay. Kang the Conqueror is slated to appear as the antagonist in the next Ant Man and the Wasp movie, played by Jonathan Majors, who is Atticus from Lovecraft Country. Uh, Asgardian nice. is Billy Maximoff, who they also brought back in WandaVision. Speed is Tommy Maximoff, which is also in. So these are the two variant brothers of yeah. Wanda, I guess, um, also featured in WandaVision. Hawkeye 2 is Kate Bishop, played by Haley Stainfield, set to appear in the Hawkeye uh, D plus, Disney Plus series. So that's the that's Hawkeye's daughter uh, that they introduced us to in Endgame, I think. Uh, Patriot is Eli that. Bradley, grandson to Isaiah Bradley, and this will make sense to people to watch the uh, um, Falcon and Winter Soldier. That was the super secret black Captain America that, um, that America created and then hushed up uh, in the 50s, uh, who was portrayed by Eli Richardson. And stature is Cassie Lang, the daughter to Scott Lang, Ant-Man, who has also appeared in Avengers Endgame. She will appear in the next Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, Quantumania as well. Uh, and then there's a supposedly a romantic linking between Cassie and Iron Lad. So I wonder if they're I, I can squint and see a lot of this cat like, OK, we like Iron Man, but we can't bring back Iron Man because he's dead. We can bring back Iron Lad. And the other thing that like the first generation of the Marvel stuff never did is really we um, weave relationships between all of the different characters. You had Hawkeye and Scarlet. uh uh, or uh, the Black Widow, but that never that always felt way more background than it was yeah. foreground stuff. And then WandaVision, of course. But like, it sounds like they're maybe going to start doing. I don't know, almost like uh, rom com type stuff or just like they'll, they'll actually be these type of relationships to take things, you know, from the heroes being, you know, it's always nice that the heroes are modified or motivated by a generic love for all mankind or a doing of goodwill. But I always think I always like having a Lois Lane yeah. where there's a person or a, a Trinity, a personification of humanity for a hero to fixate on and for it to stand in for like, it's their love for all mankind. Right. Yeah, so yeah. like, I think having those relationships that you can, the villains can exploit are a good thing. So yeah, they did a lot of stuff with family in the first uh, chunk of the Marvel stuff, but yeah, yeah. go extending that to, people who can become your family you know i think that's exciting as well i thought it was a little much that the final movie they're all sitting around drinking coronas i mean like jesus christ enough about the family stuff guys <laughs> we get it yeah we get they it. live their life one red line at a time huh right and then vin diesel took the twisty country road and there's the ghost of tony stark riding ghost riding the whip right next to him i i, I don't know if we needed that 
Yeah, but uh, how not. much of this are you buying? How much of this are you buying? Does I mean, like, cool? like I said, they need to get a new stable of characters. Yeah. And I think yep. if they're going to do it, they've got a lot to pull from here. And it seems like they're leaning that direction. Like you said, with the white vision. Um, I could totally see them. Yeah, just going for it. Going for broke on timeline stuff. You know? Do it's it. It's interesting how many like second generation characters they've got going on here, but that makes a lot mm -hmm. of sense because like why start from scratch act uh, asking your audience to care about a character when you can be like, well, this is actually the long lost daughter of so and so that you already care about or this is actually yeah. the future bastard son of this other person that you know and care about. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a, it's like I don't think you can like lean on it, but like adding that just to kind of like give the 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 audience emotional breadcrumbs to kind of eat up and be like oh yeah okay I'm invested that seems smart mm -hmm. especially since you you really fucking cleared the 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 goddamn cupboard of heroes yeah. and and wrapping up the last phase um yeah and then some um, you don't, I don't even expect like, it'll be exactly like what is laid out here but it'll be similar yeah and they're even like one you know it's because the you had the the uh, tragic death of uh, uh, Chad Bozeman mm -hmm. Boswick Chad uh, that Bozeman. they weren't playing yeah. Chad, thank you jesus christ got it in three which they obviously you know that they were planning on a half and replace a lot of heroes but like you know they had plans for that guy and right. that's not gonna they're they're gonna have to find a way to transfer that into so any shortcuts they can take to get people reinvested is, is probably going to be uh behoove them yeah and that's it that's our feedback for this episode of Loki. If you would like to uh, send in some more scholarly research into the Marvel Universe, please do so. Marvel at baldmove.com. I'd love to hear it. Uh, I'm actually really excited to see the next week's show, and uh, I'm, I'm, I got good vibes. I got good vibes of this stuff. By the way, uh, if you are a fan of Rick and Morty, guess what? We're going to have dueling random timelines of madness because Rick and Morty comes back this weekend. We're going to have full coverage of that. So we're going to be having timey wimey yeah. bullshit on Mondays, timey wimey Marvel bullshit on Wednesdays. Can our timeline sustain it? I don't know. It's going to be wild trying to keep everything straight. I feel like but, Dormammu. Uh, like, I don't know that I can handle this many timelines being thrown in my face. My brain is going to turn to mush. I've come to marathon your series. Uh, yeah, I, I, I will we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But the, you are locked in the bald move pulp. You will you will be getting both of those time time variants streamed right to your ear holes uh, on Mondays and Wednesdays. Anyway, Marvel at baldmove.com. We'll be back here next Wednesday for another episode of Loki. Until then, I'm Aaron. And I'm Jim. See you then.